Hey folks, just kind of a follow up to the last video really. Uh, I thought the last one was probably a bit too uh, theoretical maybe. It was fun having a little virtual football game, but it can be a bit boring um, all stuck inside of the script. So what I thought we'd do is we'd um, take things now into our actual game world and just see if we could play about with a few things uh, using what we've just learnt with the while st loops and the if statements. So the first thing I thought might be interesting would be to see if we could do something with our ball script. So if we have a look in there, we can see we're just kind of turning the transparency on and off. And that was a bit boring, really. So I thought maybe what we could do is we could move the ball and we could position it sort of above the goal like this. And then we could maybe get in some heading practice and see if we could head the ball in, okay? Now, normally, if I just run the game... Um, well, I'm only going to get one chance at it. It's going to drop to the ground, and then if I miss, that's it. I'm not going to get another chance. So, well, how about we go into our script. Now, remember, I disabled this last time, so I'll tick, untick it, so re-enable it, back into the ball script, and I'm going to delete all of this with the transparency. We'll keep the variable for the ball. That's going to be handy. And then I'm going to create a second variable, and this is going to be for its current position. So where it currently is, and if we look down at the properties, you can see its position is right here. It's got three numbers, actually. An X, a Y, and a Z value, which you can see change as you move it about on one of the axes. So we don't need to worry about the numbers too much, but we can just save it all inside a variable. So we can say original position, and we'll set that equal to ball dot position. So the position property is going to refer to whatever position it is at the moment, but we can save that to our variable. And so we're then putting it aside. We're putting it in a box. And so we're keeping that then. So even if it drops to the floor, it's still going to have that same position. I'll show you what I mean. So we'll print out the original position. Then we'll wait two seconds. And then we're going to print out the original position yet again. Now, remember, the current position of the ball, for me at least, is minus 15.5 and so on. And so we'll, if we run the game now, that position is going to change, but the output should stay the same. So let's see, it's dropped the floor. The output has done the same number twice. But if I look at the ball again, it's actually moved. It was 19 on the y-axis, and now it's just 3.5. So we can use this now inside of our loop. So we'll delete both of these. And we're going to create a while loop. So while, and for the condition, well, I actually want it to keep running forever. So I want it to keep going. I want a condition that's just true. I could do 5 greater than 3, or I can just write true. So while true, do, and... What we're going to want to do, well, we're going to want to wait, let's say, wait three seconds for it to fall to the ground. And then we're going to want to position the ball back up at its original position. So ball dot position equals original position, which was that position we set aside and saved earlier on. So now when I run the game, we're going to see the ball drop to the floor. And after three seconds, it's going to fall again. So now we should be able to go and try out some heading practice. Let's see if I can position myself under the ball when we load in. Where is it? And there we go. Can we get it in? There's one. And there's another. Oh, beautiful. Off the shoulder. Maybe that's the technique. Off the shoulder. <laughs> there we go. So now we can keep having some practice rather than having to sort of fish it out of the net. Um, well, how about we extend this now and see if we can make a very basic goalkeeper for ourselves. So we also have this wall over here, if you remember. And I think this has a script inside of it. Yeah, it does. And this script was when we were playing about with the properties. We were setting it to foil. Well, how about we turn this wall into a kind of goalkeeper? Now, we're not going to worry about having actual uh, character models yet as they're a little bit more complicated. For now, we'll just have a single part. And I'm going to position it sort of in the middle like this. 
I think this will do. And then I want you to duplicate it. So press Control D and duplicate it, move it over to the left, Control D again, and move it over to the right. So now we've got this part that's kind of in the middle. It's a little bit skewed, isn't it? Let's see if we can get that a bit more centered. There we go, nice and centered. So we've got these three parts. Now these two on the right and the left, I'm gonna set them to invisible. So transparency to one, and we'll make sure they're anchored. Turn can collide off, so there's no collisions. And we'll name this one on the right, we'll just name it right. And this one on the left, we'll click and rename it left. Uh, it looks like they've still all got scripts inside of them. So we can actually uh, delete all these, these scripts. And then I'm going to select them all one more time. And I'm going to press Control G to group them all together. So look inside our model. We could call the model uh, Goalie if we wanted to. We're going to select this wall now. And this wall is going to be kind of our moving goalkeeper. Uh, make sure it's anchored. Uh, and then we can go ahead and create a new script for our goalie. So add in a script. And we're going to need... Uh, three different variables. So we might want four actually. So the first of these is going to be for the wall. So uh, the wall is going to equal script dot parent. So script up to the parent and then we want to act as the wall which is down again. So script dot parent dot wall. Then we also want the left part. So that would be uh, left equals script dot parent dot left and then of course for right it's going to be the same thing again script dot parent dot right so uh, we also want to save its original position in the middle so one final variable uh, we call this central position will equal wall dot position just like we did with a ball and now we can create a loop. So while true do, we're gonna wait, uh, let's try three seconds. And then we'll set the wall dot position to be equal to, uh, well, let's move it to the left first of all. So we'll set it to left dot position. And then we could wait three seconds. And now we want to move it back into the center. So wall dot position will equal the central position that variable that we saved earlier then we'll wait another three seconds and this time we're going to move it to the right so wall dot position equals right dot position and then finally we'll wait another three seconds and we'll move it back into the center so we can just copy and paste this line and now we should have a complete loop of it moving left and then right. So we'll just name this script uh, goalie script. And now we'll run the game and we'll see if it's working. So it should move left. Yep. Three seconds back into the middle. Another three seconds and back to the right. And it should keep repeating hopefully there we go so we've got a very basic goalkeeper now let's move our ball over right in front of the goal and we'll see if we can score shall we so let's load in with our player we'll click play i'm going to run over to the other side of the pitch and uh, can we get one in oh no we've missed it let's try again and uh, we've missed again and oh the goalkeeper stopped it <laughs> we keep missing we've got to get one in haven't we oh dear and oh there we go goal <laughs> okay you get the idea so obviously uh we're keeping things basic still at the moment and the goalkeeper is an well he's not quite a goalkeeper yet he's a teleporting wall 
but hopefully that gives you a few ideas of some practical examples of using those loops. And I hope you can see there's a lot of fun things you can do with your game from here. So uh, keep watching and we're going to explore some more interesting scripting techniques in the next episode. But that's all for today. See you later, folks.